And we're live. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and everybody watching back his uh, recording. I appreciate y'all being here tonight. Uh, yes, absolutely. We don't have a guest tonight, so you're stuck with just our ugly mugs. Yeah, we got almost 70 people in here already, so that's kind of cool. They're going to be severely yeah. disappointed when they realize they're just listening to us <laughs> talk all night. Uh, right. All right. So uh, tonight we're going to talk about the missing person case of Eric Foote. He went missing from Washburn, Maine this year, January 30th, 2024. Yeah, make sure you uh, comment live so we can answer your questions if we can. Um, if you have any thoughts or theories, um, we'd like to see, hear those as well. So we do have a statement from Eric's mom. Uh, Jeff, do you want to read that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so his mom says, uh, Eric is a good person and has a good heart. And I'm not just saying that because I'm his mother, because I know his faults too and what he struggled with. But that doesn't make him less deserving of being found. And that's absolutely true. Absolutely. Uh, he considered everyone his friend, the type of person that never met a stranger and gave everyone the benefit of the doubt. He would help anyone and go, <clears throat> go without to give someone in need. He had an outgoing personality. He loved his two daughters. He was his father's buddy, and he is lost without him. God, that's heartbreaking to, to even read. Um, <laughs> when he was about three years old, he had an emergency surgery for duplicate organs. He had uh, he had absorbed a twin and almost died. After that, he suffered from stomach problems for the rest of his life. You don't know how sad it is to see the light go out of someone's eyes. He was a great kid. Uh, we got compliments about how nice he was from everyone all the time. He always loved the army. <clears throat> we were a military family and we were stationed in multiple places. He joined ROTC in high school and entered the army after graduation. He served in Korea, then Iraq. The night before he shipped out, they removed his gallbladder. What a horrible flight that must have been, I imagine. Uh, he served his country honorably. When he came back from the war, he wasn't the same. He was more withdrawn. His and his life started to decline as he struggled with depression, PTSD, and undiagnosed mental issue, health issues. His physical health declined as well. Mm. As a kid, wherever we were, wherever we were stationed in the summer, uh, in the summers, Eric would come to Washburn, play little league baseball, and spend time with his grandparents. When my husband and I retired, we asked Eric to come up here with us to get a fresh start. He had only been in Washburn for about a year and a half. He had just started going to the VA for assistance with his physical and mental health. You know the rest of the story about his terrible ordeal on January 30th, his Nana's birthday, the day he must have suffered so painfully and alone. What a horrible day for him, crying out for help and so many people seeing him and calling 911 about him. And he got no help from anyone, not even law enforcement called in, uh, not even law enforcement called an ambulance or took him to the hospital. He would be here with us today, except for that. To add to our pain and suffering, which can't be expressed in words, but has to be experienced to understand the depths of it. Uh, matters were made a thousand times worse when we were lied to and additionally over the past 58 days have struggled to get help in finding him and getting media attention his case deserves. Eric was a disabled veteran and our son. Our hearts are crushed beyond repair. He needed help and asked for help January 30th, almost two months ago, <clears throat> and he didn't get it. He still needs help. Please help find Eric so he can return to his family. And that was from his mom, Brenda Foote. Oh my gosh, that's so heartbreaking. I know yeah, that was that was kind of hard to, to even read. The first time I read it, I was like, wow. Um, and it's true. You'd think that if... So he's a soldier, right? And yeah. he's a missing person. I wonder why he's not getting the media coverage that other people are getting. Uh, and, and I know Brenda has posted everywhere. In fact, she has a page on Facebook. Uh, I just screwed up the name. Is it... Uh, help bring Eric foot home. I believe is the name of the page. If you can look that up, Jeff, and we'll share yeah, that on the screen. Well, 
let me share that screen. So this case is bizarre. So if you're not from Maine, I can tell you January Maine gets really cold. Uh, Eric was seen. Whoops. Go ahead. Yeah. So this yeah. is this is a Facebook page, and I'll also share this out in the uh, in the chat for everyone to go check that out. That's going to be right in the chat now. Um, go on and and follow that page for more updates. Yeah, absolutely. Show As support. And it's 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 heartbreaking. So if you're not familiar with the case, uh, we'll go over the timeline here. Are you good with that, Jeff? Yeah. All right. So January 30th, 2024. So that morning, the temperature is right around 18 degrees. Uh, Officer Cole encounters Eric in the early morning outside of his home in the full stages of a mental health crisis. Officer Cole does not call for any assistance for Eric, and he ends up just leaving Eric on Eric's front lawn. Eric, mind you, 18 degrees, had just a t-shirt on and a pair of jeans. Yeah, like that's, and if anyone's from outside of the U.S., that's Fahrenheit, not Canada, uh, not Canada, not uh, Celsius. Celsius. So that is, that is rigid. So at this point, no one really knows anything about uh, Officer Cole encountering Eric that morning. Uh, but then around 1.15 p.m., he sees Eric again. This time, Eric is walking along the Washburn Road heading towards Presque Isle. The temperature at that time is around 25 degrees. Uh, Eric still does not have a jacket on, T-shirt, and jeans. Uh, Officer Cole sees Eric on the side of the Washburn Road. Eric is still in a manic state with no jacket and a short sleeve shirt on. Officer Cole then asks Eric to get in his cruiser for a ride. Eric told Officer Cole that he needs to talk to someone. So Officer Cole then heads towards Presque Isle. Officer Cole initially tells the family he dropped Eric off at the hospital. So the family reached out to the police department to find out, you know, where their son is. And Cole tells them that, yeah, I dropped him off the hospital. Uh, he should be there. They reached out to the hospital and they had no record of Eric ever making it to the hospital. The family then contacts the uh, chief of police, who then interviews Officer Cole. Officer Cole says, well, I dropped him off at Freshies, which is a small gas station deli type thing in Presque Isle. So A, why is Cole changing his story? Why wouldn't he just tell his family that's where he, where he dropped him off? Right. So later through dispatch records, it is revealed that he left him at Freshies in Presque Isle. So later on that evening, Eric is never seen on CCTV at Freshies, and Cole is the last confirmed contact with Eric. There's a report that a minister sees Eric walking back towards his home on the Washburn Road. And that night, the temperatures got as low as 13 degrees, uh, minus 13 degrees. And the only real search that PD has done was on February 19th. The Sheriff's Department conducts the only search for Eric off the Washman Road. Officers and dogs find no signs of Eric. So that to it's, me, like... That's... It's disgusting. I mean, and there there's other connections uh, in this with, with that officer. It's another case that we've talked about as well, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later, but... Um, did, did you have any more on that? Cause I can, I just got some, just the simple spots on Google earth where, yeah, uh, go ahead. where that was just to kind of show them where he was picked up, how far it is from Presque Isle. Yeah. So this is freshies here in, uh, inside of in Presque Isle. Um, and this is Washburn up here. That's the, the, not sure what we have for a distance in that. I think that's the guy there. So I think it's about three miles. Well, as a, as a crow flies from Freshies to Washburn, that's nine miles. Uh, 
Um, I didn't get the hospital on here, although I don't think the hospital matters because he never made it there in the first place, right? Right. And Jennifer, that's true. Such a rural town. Um, I can't believe the officer was so busy he couldn't help take care of someone that was in desperate need, especially a veteran, I mean, or anyone. Well, and, and especially from, you know, what his mom was saying, you know, he's willing to go like, like that's the really heartbreaking thing about it. He's always willing to go out of his way to try and help other people. And, you know, he, he cares about other people and then, you know, and served his country. He's obviously a selfless person, selfless, not selfish. Um, and then to just be let down, um, it's, it, it, it hurts to even say, man, it, and I should say, um, we did ask Brenda to come on. <laughs> She is his uh, mother, um, but the family's taking this really hard as anyone would. Uh, they're they're both her and her husband are both physically sick from this. They can't sleep. Um, they're not eating. So she said she didn't think she could go on publicly and, and talk about the case, but she did offer us up that statement, which we really appreciate. Yeah, great. You very very much. Yeah, we don't we don't want to put any extra pressure on here. So you know we'll. Uh... We'll do the best we can to try and get the, the message out. And obviously it, it greatly helps if you guys, you know, share this out. Um, cause you know, we're not, people aren't going to see this unless it's, uh, in their face. Right. And no one else is really talking about it. Uh, officer, a lot of inconsistencies and we're going to look at Cole's past as well. Freshies has cameras. He should have been on them along with Cole's car. That's sketchy. Yeah, Kara, it doesn't make much sense. Like, the only thing that I'm seeing is, and what they told the family was that he was not seen on camera. So that means, you know, did they see the police car even pull in the parking lot? Now, there is nothing ever said about to... what he... Oh, uh, there is nothing ever said about what he needed to talk to people about, right? It was just... Uh... He just needed to talk to someone right and he he was having a full mental episode a mental health episode where he's very upset crying at times uh yeah the first time officer cole comes across him he's on his hands and knees in his front yard uh, again it was like 18 degrees at that point and he drops him off somewhere like such disregard for another human being if anyone knows um, anyone that works at Freshies, ask them if they saw anything that night. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're like this, like, and even the, the police have come out and said that they've pretty much exhausted all of their resources. Well, so they claim, but one search does not tell, that doesn't say to me that they've exhausted all their resources. They've only done one search, but they are asking for public's help. So if, if anyone on January 30th was in uh, Presque Isle, around that time if they saw anything um it was around 1 1 p.m was the last time um 1 30 yeah well, was 1, about the last time okay it was about the last time he was seen um so from then on uh if anyone was around definitely definitely reach out and i have the number for the uh press guile or aristic county sheriff's office it's 207 uh Five three two, three four seven one. Um, Alicia Thomas Fitzherbert says, "Did the minister see him on the Washburn Road that afternoon or that evening after being left at Freshies?" So this was what uh, the pastor's wife had reached out to Brenda and gave her this message: "Hey Brenda, my husband just saw your post about your son tonight because he was looking at information about." Mrs. Shaw, which is the other case we covered a few weeks ago. A teen Shaw who's also missing from Washburn. He then realized he had seen him on the night of his disappearance. He called the law enforcement number to let them know. But I wanted to share with you that he saw your son on the Washburn Road in a t-shirt on one side of the road arguing with a man in a truck on the other side of the road. It struck him as unusual and he texted a group chat uh, what he had seen. That's how he is certain, um, sorry, struck him as unusual. And he texted in a group chat 
with what he had seen. That's how he was certain what night it was. So basically, he went back and read the group chat. This is this font's really small. And what time was that? You just said that say. night. Um, I don't think that is much information to go on. But he did call the sheriff's office to let them know. I'm sorry to know that your child had to suffer in the cold, but I'm praying that he's found a warm, safe place to be in after that. So yeah, so Brenda didn't know a time either. So when I was trying to get the timeline from Brenda, there's a lot of uh, statements, comments with no real timeline of certain. And that that was on the Washburn Road, times. right? Right. Yeah. So this is this is the Washburn Road that connects Presque Isle to Washburn, um, like Route 164 here. So it goes through Cruiseville. So not entirely sure where it was on that. Um, a fairly good stretch, but um, there's a lot of comments. We're, We're going to going to apologize in advance if we don't get to a lot of these because there is a lot of comments. But we do appreciate you guys. Uh, Trisha said, "Sad part is cop hasn't told truth and keeping secrets that could solve the case exactly." And Megan, we're going to get into this. I uh, hope this cop isn't on active duty right now. He is not. Never should have been either. And then let's get, we'll get into this now, Billy Joe. So it sounds like Officer Cole has a history himself with the police. Uh, and that he does. So this is from the Tampa Bay Times, and I believe it was April 2001. And I know every anyone can change Uh this is not indictment. I'm not saying that Officer Cole had anything to do with the disappearance other than maybe not performing his job the way he should have. Um, but this was in Tampa Bay Times back in 2001. It says, Deputy suspended, charged with battery. A sheriff's de a deputy faces battery charges after authorities say he pushed his wife, bit a friend, and threatened suicide in a drunken rage. Deputy Chandler T. Cole, 31, a member of the agency's traffic enforcement unit, unit was arrested Friday night and has been suspended with pay from the force until an internal investigation is complete. First of all, why is he getting paid? Yeah, why is that paid? His wife has an emergency restraining order against him that states Cole has a drinking problem and has been violent before. So he's got a restraining order. I don't know how he'd have still have a gun. Um... Where did I leave off? According to the sheriff's report, Cole went to a party at the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge and got extremely drunk Friday night. As he and his wife being driven home by a friend, the couple argued. Jernigan then reached over to him while he was sitting turned around in the passenger seat and yelling at his wife. Jernigan tried to get him to sit forward and stop fighting. I mean, I'm guessing this is the friend. Um, that's when Cole bit Jernigan's hand, officials said. Cole's wife then yelled at him to stop acting like a jerk. But he reached into the back seat and pushed her in the face three times, the report said. He then told his wife that he knew she hated him, that he was going to commit suicide because he loved her so much. Uh, the news article goes on to say, he said that he would shoot himself the next morning and that their two daughters would miss him, the report said. Then he punched the windshield of the sport utility vehicle, shattering the glass, and opened this door and jumped from the moving vehicle. Jernigan stopped the SUV, got out, and tried to talk to Cole. He told her to stay away from him. Meanwhile, his wife ran to a relative's house and called the sheriff's office. Deputies came and arrested Cole, who faces two counts of battery. He was taken to the Hernando County Jail and released the next morning on a $500 bail. $500 bail? Yeah. Uh, this was 2001, so... Um, while Cole was in custody, authorities removed several guns from his home, and Cole's wife obtained an emergency restraining order against him. In the order, she requested that Cole be banned from their home and her workplace are forbidden to have any contact with her. She said she would be willing to allow him to supervise visits with their daughters. The article is by Jamie Malarney, published April 17th, 2001. Uh, I did see... Let me pull that back up. So, it's quite obvious, not, not a history of being the most ethical person on the planet. So, listen to this. You're going to love this. So, on September... I'm sorry, May 8th, 2001. 
the quick little article in here says a deputy accused of pushing his wife, butting a friend, threatening suicide after getting drunk at a party will return to work today. So this was in April. So May 8th, he returned to work as a condition wow. of his return. Deputy Chandler Cole must also complete a 26 week batterers intervention course, attend Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Chief Deputy Mike Hensley said, we hope this will cause him to change his unacceptable behavior. Mike, uh, Deputy Mike Hem Hensley said. But like that, that if you're right, uh, we, we, you know, we, we, we hope, we hope that this will make him change, right? Not like that is such, such bullshit. Well, lots yeah. Of, lots of comments here. Um, and I don't know, I'd have to look up the, the laws in Florida, which I didn't get a chance to do before this, but if you're convicted of a battery charge, is that, I guess you can still have weapons stay and still be a police officer well yeah there's definitely no way that he should have still been a police officer but again 2001 maybe like i even even so like even in 2001 there's hopefully that law has changed but there's no reason for that it, him to have stayed on it's crazy but yeah if there was a yeah, he definitely could not have had, if there's a restraining order, and maybe maybe it's just in Maine. I feel like it's across the country, though. If there's a restraining order against you, you're not allowed to like have a firearm in your possession. Um, let's get to some of these comments real quick. Uh, let's see. Where did we leave off? I don't know. Oh, yeah. the, the list is very long. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Is cops not investigate ingredients one of their own? Oh, yeah, yeah. So... I'm sure it's kind of just a hush hush push through. He's not going to get nailed like other people would. Why did the cop lie? First, he dropped him off the hospital, then changed his story. This cop needs to have a lie detector test done. So, the officer, when questioned by his chief, when he changed the story up and said, Well, no, I dropped him off at Freshies, the officer was then notified that he was going to be suspended, uh, at which point, Officer Cole then told him he had quit. So he resigned his position. Again, if you have nothing to hide, why would you resign? Why would you lie? Right. And um, I also don't, oh, and this, I don't also, uh, Heather's saying, from my understanding, it was said that Freshies claimed their cameras weren't recording that day. So I wonder how that's well just something from earlier. Knew the officer. Hmm. Uh, Brenda thinks that it was a BTS, PTSD episode, Danielle. Uh, yeah, so we just covered that, and I know we're, we're kind of behind, but yes, the officer had resigned. Someone needs to talk to the podcast, Dark Down East. Why? You got us. You. <laughs> no, she does a great job over there as well. The more eyes on the case, the better. Oh, you just said that. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. So, yeah, he quit, and Luke says he's working as a carpenter. I bet he does shoddy work. Um, now, we also will open this up if anyone wants to call in. Um, we do have a number oh, yeah. of people We'd to call in. Um, We'd love to have a guest on. You mind if I show this question? It's kind no, of no, yeah, yeah, no. That's that's just up there. Oh, thank you for having your picture of Ayla on your profile, Dominique. Uh, if he was left anywhere near Freshies, the other businesses around should have some, seen something on their cameras. That in traffic cams, there's no way if he was brought to a Presque Isle, a camera somewhere didn't come up on the road. There's a dispo and a restaurant next to Freshies and business behind. Yeah. And I don't know how much I couldn't tell you how much uh, investigating the officers actually did in this case. You know, did they go out and ask for video? Yeah. I mean, they, they claim they've exhausted their resources, but that was from the looks of it, just one search for him, right? So, and yes, Heather, that same thing, 
thing that I'd heard, the minister would have stopped had he been alone, but because he had his son in the truck with him, he didn't want to jeopardize his son's safety. So that is something we had heard as well. Well, and I'm I'm curious about the, the truck. The truck if, if yeah, the details of the truck does. Right. Yeah. So it sounds like the truck was on the opposite side of the road from him. So he's walking back to which Washburn and that truck would have been coming from Washburn to Presque Isle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no or, or drove past him and turned around. Right. Amy Diane says, yes, he did speak to my husband. Oh, at, at Freshies that night. Yeah. Unfortunately he, to my knowledge, he didn't get a license plate. Christy. I mean, even what color? Because if it was white, maybe it was one of the. Uh, what did, does Pres Prescal has its own police department, right? That wasn't the sheriff's department that he worked for. Uh, he worked for Washburn PD. Okay. Oh, so okay. Took him, took him out of Washburn, dropped him off of Prescal, went head back to Washburn, I guess. So yeah, so uh, that's uh, a good question, Megan. About like, I'm not sure what the policies are, but how do you? Yeah, how do you get a new job? Here. Like if, if I was hiring, I don't care how much experience someone has. Uh, if I'm, if I'm going to hire someone for the police department, if they have a history of like beating their significant others and drunken rages, like, I don't care how long ago that was. It's not happening. Right. And as I mentioned, uh, February 19th, I believe it was, they did a search, uh, Kara says, did anything come from the search in Krausville where the footprints and smokes were found? Uh, dogs didn't find anything. They didn't find anything else. Um, and to my knowledge, they didn't do any DNA on the smokes to find out if they belonged to him or who they belonged to. This is a good point. Patricia she says, cop stated he dropped off Eric. Investigation is still being used as officers Cole's word so yeah so they just agree like oh that's that's what happened to him he was last seen to this place and dropped off there uh we do have the the minister that did see him walking oh just try to click on something and got oh, comments go in the way no no i don't even see where it was <laughs> the, the comments moved past it nancy flesh says are the cops supposed to have body cameras on or car cameras um i don't know if it's I don't know if every police department has as a requirement. I know most do just to protect their officers. Yeah. I mean, in, in the state doesn't make a ton of money either. So um, I'm not entirely sure if everyone's going to have that. Oh, I got a call coming in one second. Where exactly on the Washburn road was Eric last seen? Uh, to my knowledge, uh, the, the uh, minister's wife didn't tell Brenda where. I uh, just said that it was seen on the Washburn road. He might have told police a more uh, thorough location i had a call coming in but they hung up oh somebody's shy <laughs> oh teresa that's my wife's aunt oh goodness how does he make it to a cop we are supposed to be able to count on them to help us not hurt us exactly that's exactly right like he was having a episode manic episode he needed help and the police officer didn't do his job I didn't think you could become an officer if you have a record. Um, I think you probably could still become an <laughs> officer, but it depends on the record, like right. the battery and threatening to. Yeah, if you got some like driving, like speeding tickets or something, it's probably fine, but especially given the circumstance. Officer Cole should never have been hired as an officer again after his record. Well, you know, the funny part is the department that initially suspended him with pay, they brought him back on within a month so I'm sure he changed a lot right wow I... uh, his son is also PD is that Cole's son hmm yeah I don't want to get into his, no, his I... personal family but um, I know his son was going to school for criminal justice and I think he works at the airport um Northland Investigations Consulting, not if he has a PFA. Right. So was was the charges dropped or how does how does that work that you can still become a police officer? Unless because it's in a different state, right? Maybe that's why he's in uh, Maine. Yeah, I think I think off they uh, dropped some of the charges. 
so yeah, so let's talk about this. Thanks, Kara. Um, so we had talked about Atin Shah's case a few weeks ago. Well, probably about a month ago now. Uh, also went missing from Washburn, Maine. And Chandler Cole was the one that documented Atin's missing person report. Town report says zero missing persons, and there clearly was one. He obviously does a terrible job. Tell us how you really think. Oh, um, let me see if I can play this. There is a voicemail from the person that just called. Um, I should be able to play this through. We'll apologize if there's anything bad here, guys. Yes, my name is Patricia Vaughn, and I'm the, the well, Eric Foote is my nephew. You guys hearing that? Um, anyways, uh, the cop didn't drop him off at first just because this is what the cops and the chief of police is, is telling everybody. Now, everybody shouldn't be believing this cop after the inconsistencies he says about the hospital. Now, why are they they backing him up and lying about it? And on top of that, this Amy girl, she just came out after 40 days. And uh, there's no way that he would talk to anybody in that situation and he, his mentality. And I question her. Thank you. Oh, all right. Okay. We got some drama going on. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Uh, let's see. So yeah, so clearly he's either he's a crooked cop or he's just not very good at his job. As a teen Shaw was never really reported missing, there wasn't much done about the case. Did this kind of believed Mike Shaw, her husband's story about her going off to work on a cruise ship in the middle of COVID. Right. Yeah. And, and we, we, like we said, we did cover that, that one before. If you guys want to go back and uh, look that one up at Teen Shaw, like she was not someone who was just going to abandon her, her kids and her family. Like she was very connected to all of them. And yes, I'd actually talked to Brenda about this too. Uh, maybe starting creating a search party this spring. Um, I don't know how much snow you guys got up there. I think Jeff, you got what? Almost two feet your house, didn't you? We had over two feet here with that last mm -hmm. storm. So Megan says, have they had any search parties in Washburn for Eric? Uh, just the one that we know of on February 19th with the police department, the game wardens, and some dogs, which turned up nothing. She said, can we organize a thorough search along the roads and by the river about an hour away at Alaska? But we'll absolutely go and help search. Thank you, Megan. And Freshies, so Patricia says Freshy showed no images of Eric. And then we're hearing also that some people said Freshies said they didn't, they weren't recording that day. Potentially. I mean, this is all mostly coming out of the, the chat that we're listening to here. I mean, it is nice to see there's people who are local to the area who are, who are in here. Shannon Barby says, is no one actively looking for him like law enforcement? Uh, he's a missing person. Um, I don't know how much they're actually doing to look for him. In fact, they kind of told Brenda that uh, they think he's passed already and he died of hypothermia and that they would probably find him in the spring. That's what they told Brenda, his mom. God, what a heartbreaking thing to hear. Stacy Baker says someone who knew Eric worked at Freshies and said he spoke to him. So that'd be interesting. Uh, Stacy, do you know what kind of... Oh, I think that was... Uh... I thought there was someone in here that was talking. One of the messages earlier, comments from earlier, said that their ex-husband was working there and said they talked to him. That was the uh, Amy one that oh, okay. Trisha talked about. Um, so I I didn't think this, Christy. That's a good point. Probably just coincidence, but both Eric and Chandler are from Tampa. So I wonder if they had any interaction while they both lived down that way. I mean, Tampa's a really big city, though, so... Oh, so it's not like Presque Isle or Washburn. No. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting. Like, what if? What if? Yeah, you know, that that is history? that is that is an interesting connection, though. Am I really this far up? Seven thirty. What time you got? I'm seven minutes behind on the comments. Sorry, guys. Um, what is this? Uh, Chandler actually commented on her friend's a teen missing post, saying he investigated and found nothing. Lack of caring about the community is it's not even cool thankfully he resigned yeah i i kind of wish that they like oh man 
I don't know, man. I... Um, I, oh, I think police definitely need a lot more training um, to deal with people that are having mental health episodes or uh, as Austin pick to the PIPD shot a family friend over a mental episode after he was injured and he passed then and there. They aren't the kind of protection we would hope for. I mean, it's, it's one thing, right? If someone is like attacking you if someone comes at you with a knife that's that's unfortunate but if someone is you know just like manic and maybe they're being erratic like i don't know the situation involving your your family friend but like if someone's just having an episode you know talk to them like now, do something i wonder if austin are you related to, them. austin are you related to virginia pick two She's another missing person from Maine. Has Officer Cole given a reason why he left the force? Is that something to look into? Pretty sure he left the force because he was being suspended and knew that he screwed up. Yeah, he knew that yeah, he knew he fucked up. Again, uh, I don't think I don't think he had anything to do with, with the disappearance. I don't think, you know, there was an argument or anything like that. I think that he had poor poor judgment, right? And didn't fall through what he should have done. And Shirley says, do they not have some kind of GPS tracking on police cars that track where the police cars have driven? I, I don't know the personally the yeah. finances of, of Presque Isle Police Department or Washburn Police Department. Um, you would assume that they probably should. Like, I think every department should have cameras on all officers and their vehicles. And yes, most definitely GPS, but there's nothing saying that they do, right? Yeah. And Jess is right. I did look at that earlier. Uh, the website still shows uh, Chandler Cole is working there, but he definitely has resigned. They can't keep up with the missing person list, so they probably aren't keeping up with their staff either. Uh, let's see. Possible. Billy Joe, is it possible that drugs could be a play in this? I mean, un unfortunately, that's what a lot of these cases center around right some sort of drug activity there's someone buying selling or overdosing i mean th this sounds more like you know it was it was a mental health crisis that needed needed attention i i don't think that maybe even if drugs were involved probably wasn't as as big a factor as the actual mental health issues and i'm guessing heather's says june july because that's when the trails will open back up for atv riders um a, a strong possibility of that and uh, the the other thing too is um uh, and i'll bring it back up the you know that washburn road goes right by the Aristoc river too um so unfortunately that is a, a real possibility as well as that he might have one way or another ended up in the water uh yeah can you zoom in along that the river there and actually we can kind of show them where a teen shot went missing as well yeah i didn't have that in here um i don't have a teens it's thing it's actually close to where you have that pin um oh is it yeah it's like see how the river gets close to the road over here yeah, down here. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember from memory here. Uh, no, it's not island there. It's it's in the same general area though where Keen Shaw's house is. We'd have to look up the address again. And Austin says that uh, Virginia Pictou was uh, his cousin. Austin, thank you for joining in. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Kayla, yeah, we did cover that earlier. Uh, Chandler has charged some tampon on his wife who had put emergency restraining order for abuse. And then she says, Eric wasn't a person who would have hurt himself. So I'm thinking Kayla knows Eric personally. Uh, we are so sorry that Eric has not been found yet. Yeah, so Stacy, funny story. It's uh, just the sheriff's department working on it. I did notice that yesterday state police did share the case, which I thought was kind of 
good timing since we were going live and we're going to be bashing <laughs> these departments. They <laughs> they'd post that. And Chrissy also says, were any law enforcement agencies invited to speak on this podcast? And if Klein, no, we, we don't generally reach out to law enforcement um, to talk on the podcast. We have we have had one of them get a hold of us to to come on uh, in a diff- for a different state. But um, I'm, I'm not sure if it would really be able to yield very much, but it's 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 worth an attempt, I guess, at some point. We're just, I'm, I'm so used to us not, you know, people don't usually get answers from the police departments in, in a lot of these cases anyways. You know, it's a lot of it's like open stuff. And even if it's missing, you know, okay. most of those details usually come out. Um, or Bucket already Jeff. Out there, but. Jeff, let's call him. Let's do it live. <laughs> it's seven. Yeah, they're probably all in bed. Yeah, right. So I hope I'm saying her name right. Leisha Thomas. Uh, it is my understanding that Eric had been harassed by Officer Cole on several occasions in Washburn. When he would go to the local store, be walking down Main Street, Cole stopped him several times, asked why he was out walking and that he was keeping an eye on him. Eric felt harassed and fearful of him is what I was told. So yeah, so it's crazy when you hear some of these stories, but again, you also have to look at it as third-party information. Who knows? If, if you do have uh, direct knowledge of anything like that, please reach out to us or reach out to the uh, sheriff's department let them know Candace yes uh, this is so sad Eric was a good friend of mine and I hope he has found this is heartbreaking sorry to hear that uh, yes Cole was harassing Eric according to Patricia you must be way ahead of me because I just saw one that you posted Oh yeah, yeah. I was getting more of the the more recent ones. We need to get a search crew together. Has anyone made contact with his children's mother? He always talked about going to see his children. Has anyone looked into bus tickets? That's a good thought, um, Whitney. Absolutely, you know, could be that he he did take off on his own, but it's highly doubtful. He was having an episode, uh, not prepared for the weather. As I said earlier, it's got to minus thirteen, minus. Yeah, minus 18 that night. And, and from the sounds of it, he, you know, he liked to stay around his family as well. You know, if if he'd just taken a bus ticket, uh, I don't, I don't, it doesn't line up to me that he would have just gotten on a bus and headed out somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Austin, yeah, I wasn't alive to ever meet her. And he's talking about his cousin, Virginia, but it had an effect on my mom and uh, from the stories my family have told me and i talked to francis i believe that must be your maybe your uncle um about her case to come on here we just haven't had a chance to do that yet seems strange if he was oh, harassed oh, by i was, I was oh, just to click that one too <laughs> seems strange if he was harassed by cole he would be willing to take a ride with him i mean if 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 you're in a desperate situation i think that that is understandable that that you would get a ride you because most people would assume that they could trust a police officer even if they're kind of a dick to them sometimes right but um from the sounds of it he still ended up letting him down um oh okay so heather says how do i post a picture of an email i got from the main state police and then northland investigations Consulting says, screenshot it and post in the comments. Yes, absolutely. Please do. We'd love to see what that is. Or you can call Jeff on the on the call-in line and tell us what it says. Yeah, that, that number, you can send a text message to that number as well. And we can True. respond to those as well. Uh, Heather says he had no money on him. Patricia said, yes, he had no money. So why is cop dropping him off at a store? Good question. Chrissy says, so if he who's harassing him, why is it? that not being looked into i don't understand this at all i feel so much for this family it's so fishy especially if he was one of the potentially one of the last people to see him he claims he dropped him off there there's no camera footage but he claims he interacted with him i guess the 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 last alleged uh viewing of him would have been the the minister right um and not saying that he didn't see him but you know, it's it's kind of on his word that he did, in fact, see him and maybe not someone else. But uh, that, yeah, Cole, I think, should be probably questioned a bit more. 
Kara says, Sally. Drop it. Oh, sorry. Yep. Good. <laughs> I say sorry a lot. I noticed that. Yeah. yeah. Um, sadly, a young man in my area drowned by falling into the harbor during a mental health crisis. It can happen and not intentionally, meaning he wasn't trying to harm himself. Yeah. There's, there's been no talk of Eric um, being in that state of mind. glad to see this story is getting out there i'm from a surrounding town and there's little coverage of this it's so sad officer cole is he a caribou officer or press gal he was washburn um and i think maybe they he subcontracted with a couple other towns up there as well because i don't think washburn had like a maybe a full-time position for him but he's no longer a police officer he has resigned and connie it's sad but true patricia needs to oh i'm sorry Brennan needs to be calling the police department daily. Bug the hell out of them. Yeah, and, and why? And why do you have again, to? Look? Yeah, you shouldn't have to. And and sh again, like we had said, you know, she is very distraught over all of this. Um, so I don't know if if she would necessarily have the energy for it. Um, but someone needs to be. Uh, somebody put in the comments. And I won't post it. I mean, I guess if somebody wanted to see it, they could go find it anyways. But. Uh, this may be irrelevant, but 10 or 12 years ago, I seen Cole at a bar with a group of people known to partake in drug activity. I did not see him do drugs, but it was kind of suspicious when he and the group of people came back in the bar wiping their noses. Another fun fact, one of the gentlemen he was hanging with that night got popped with drugs two years ago in Wade, Maine. And this is all alleged. We're saying that now. <laughs> this is from our comments. Did you fellas hear about the Jeremy Lau case? That explains a lot about the sheriff's department up here. Jeremy Lau, that does sound familiar. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Brenda's telling me, uh, I've talked to her multiple times, and she says she keeps calling the PD. They're not returning phone calls. They're not giving, giving her any information. Nothing new. They pretty much don't do anything. So apparently Jeremy Lau was uh, killed in police custody. Oh, yeah. He tripped Off and fell, right? County Sheriff. Uh, shocked, beaten, and handcuffed face down. Sounds like resisting. And that just, uh, the reporting is from 2003. It looks like, how did I not hear about that? That's very recent. Uh, nope, March 2002 looks like roughly when it happened, but it was settled in 2003. Uh, Heather no charges against the authorities. Says Miss Callahan, Eric is listed as a missing person has been since the beginning. A rustic sheriff's office put out a file six missing person and it's been active in NCIS since the first was reported missing. Eric's not listed on the main state police missing person list because we are not the primary investigating agency, but we've been working in conjunction with the ASC, ACSO and offering our assistance anywhere they need it. Sergeant Forrest Dudley has been my primary point of contact and it doesn't give me any more. So it sounds like Heather maybe works for the police uh, state police. Heather, you want to call in? Give us an update. <laughs> uh, Don Redeker's, Redeker says, it was definitely strange for Cole to not taking him to the hospital if he was having a mental crisis. You're supposed to not fear from the cops by Eric Waz, question mark. Uh, definitely he should be questioned more. Uh, more than them not contacting the mother about nothing. That's crazy. Yeah. It seems like it's Dominique. Dominique, uh, Dominique, yeah. There's more active unsolved cases in Maine than there are solved ones. It's devastating, yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> or maybe Adventures with Purpose could come up. Um, Tim Belanger says, The waters are open, so there's no reason why Border Patrol can't ride their boat up and down that river. Honestly, like if I lived closer, I'd do that. Right. Static seems common for Washburn police officers. 
Wasn't there a female officer that was dismissed from that washburn for sketchy behavior? I'm not aware of that, but I can certainly look into it. Yeah, this it is kind of nuts. Robin she says, yes, yeah, crazy. He and another one from Washburn are missing and two murders unsolved in Rooster County. There's such a, I mean, it's a big area, but you know, there's not many people that live up there. Oh, and correction here. Jeremy Lau is 2023, not 2003. I thought I said 2023. Sorry if I said 2003. Excessive force noted on data on Washburn PD. So they've had that before, apparently. Uh, initially, it was my initially it was my understanding that they had leads that they were following up on, and they didn't want a lot of information put out to the public because it looked as though they would have had answers very soon. I heard this from Brenda, Eric's mother, and tried to reassure her that maybe they uh, would know something within a matter of a few days. At this point. Uh, at this point in time, it is looking like that was the case, and it, that that was the case at all. Okay, and it has been uh, a ball that dropped completely, and it's very confusing. I assume is where that that goes to. Uh, State says, "What about drones? Why can't they be searching the area with drones like they did in New Hampshire?" And that's a good point too. Even if you're a citizen, sleuth like the ones watching tonight, if you're in the area, you know. Flying drones is fun. I have a drone myself. Um, spend some time and help look for Eric. Yeah, it's 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 kind of crazy the what you can see from above. Above you can because you could very easily be walking, uh, like searching an area. You know, if there's big gaps between you and another person, you might look at something and not see anything. But from above, you could you know see the outline of of either a person or uh, articles of clothing, like the angles are a lot different. You usually have a much better view of stuff. So just to go back over the timeline again, January 30th, 2024, uh, that morning it was about 18 degrees. Officer Cole encounters Eric in the early morning outside of his house in the full stages of a mental health crisis. Officer Cole does not call for assistance for Eric. Doesn't call you know, for an ambulance or anything take, to help take care of him. Then again, around 1.15 that afternoon, Officer Cole sees Eric on the side of the Washburn Road. Eric is still in a manic state with no jacket and short sleeve shirt. Officer Cole then has Eric get in his cruiser for a ride. And, and this is something else Brenda had told me. Um, Officer Cole initially tells the family he dropped Eric off at the hospital. Uh, then once they question, you know, they call the hospital, try to look for him. We have oh. another call. Oh, sorry, that's not supposed to be coming through yet. Uh, Officer Cole initially tells the family he dropped Eric off at the hospital. Later, he changes it or is found out through the dispatch that he actually dropped him off at Freshies. The other thing that Brenda had told me was that on the dispatch logs, uh, Officer Cole was joking with the dispatcher about how Eric was behaving that morning. And that's how we know that he actually came across him that morning. So it's nothing in the records showing that just that one comment in the dispatch okay, line. Okay, Travis, we do have Heather on the line, actually. Okay, cool. All right, hey, Heather. Heather. <laughs> okay. If we were, if we continue from ACSO on the letter, it says I forwarded him your email He'll be sharing the post on our social media to help get the word out statewide. I hope this helps answer your questions. Respectfully, Josh. I guess it's Detective Sergeant Josh Haynes in Maine State Police. So I haven't heard anything from anybody else. So it's okay. just a quick quick response to your email? Yeah, that that's basically what they did. And I've been contacting them since Monday and haven't heard anything. So, do, do you work with the state police then? No, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Just just a concerned citizen. To... Well, you sound like you're a concerned uh, citizen, so do you want a that. job? <laughs> uh, I'd want a job. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I have could... babies at home I take care of, so oh, there you go. that's okay. my job. Well, it's it's. I'm very happy to hear that there are other people out here trying to trying to help with this. 
um, you know, the family's going through a lot. And I don't know if you know them personally at all, but um, like no, that's I, the... I don't know them personally, but I have talked to Brenda. Okay. So, yeah, I've sent her over information as I have gotten it myself. Okay. Heather, thank right. you so well, much you for guys. everything you're doing. I appreciate it. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. Have thank a great you. night. Yes, thank right. you. Thanks for calling in. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, good question, Austin says. Why did they wait almost a month to search for him, anyways? If there was a matter, uh, mental crisis, right? And and why should they have to be searching for him? He should have been dropped off the hospital. He should have had, you know, an ambulance called for him. Right. Yeah. He could have. They could have. Cole could have just done his job properly from the start, and you know, it that it sounds like it could have, like you know, Eric was going through some stuff, anyways, and that could have been the moment that things turned around for the better for him, right? If, to, if he gets into the hospital and, and uh, trying to address his needs, you know, and instead it turned into what we assume to be a really just tragic night. We don't know for sure, but it doesn't look good, right? So later on the night of January 30th, temperatures got down to minus 13 to minus 18 degrees. Um, Eric is not seen on CCTV at Freshies. Cole is the last confirmed contact with Eric. There's a report of a minister who is driving through uh, heading towards Washburn. He sees Eric walking back towards uh, his house on the Washburn Road. Um, the minister didn't stop to pick him up because he had a young child in the vehicle with him and was concerned for the child's safety. Uh, but he also reported that he was seemed to be arguing with someone in a pickup truck. And to my knowledge, he hasn't said uh, what color the truck was or, or type of vehicle. I actually want to show some of the comments that people have said on Facebook too. Uh, let me go back to share my screen. All right, can you see that? It is kind of small. Um, these are things I got from Brenda. So Heather Panette says, I seen him in the afternoon or a bit after that maybe when the police picked him up, they said someone was en route to check what the distance was. They had numerous calls on it that day. It was below zero and the guy was only wearing a t-shirt. So multiple people saw him walking, multiple people called in in and now we have uh, him missing. Janelle Wilcox says, I saw him jogging up the road towards Washburn that morning near the snow sled trail going from Crossville to Washburn. And that's the area that the uh, PD did search. I thought it was strange for someone out jogging without jacket. This would have been before police picked him up and took him to Presque Isle. There were some comments that he almost got hit by cars and someone saw him coming out of the woods. And they say, saw him throwing off his shirt, crying in distress and something really wrong. Man. Why did nobody stop? I know. Yeah, I mean, you see someone yeah, jogging in the middle of January or the end of January, almost February uh, in Maine, and you don't like, hey, are you all right? Um, Don is saying, uh, did someone say earlier, uh, Eric may be in the Tampa area? I could be wrong, but I can try to post him somehow uh, to Tampa area. So he's from tampa um the um but I, I assume you're saying make a post about him in the tampa area and that would be awesome um, yeah i think it's a great idea especially if, if he has any any friends down in that area that that might you know recognize him maybe have heard from him something that would that would be awesome don Oh, yeah. So something else Brenda wanted me to let you guys all know that when they called the officer again, he insisted that he dropped Eric off at the hospital and I wasn't going to hold his hand and take him inside. That's what he told his mother. Uh, the officer knew Eric lived in Washburn and had no transportation to get back home. He knew Eric needed help and didn't call him an ambulance or take him to the hospital. Uh, when the family called the chief of police, the chief told us that the officer lied to him, too. And when he tried to put him under administrative leave pending an investigation, Officer Cole got mad and quit and walked out. 
unreal unreal this should be a movie like a child like oh i'm you can't you know i'm not gonna get in trouble i'm just gonna leave um i won't reread all this this is his uh when he made the tampa bay times but just so you know if you come across uh officer cole in that area as well like please share any stories you have of him whether it be good or bad like if you think he's a great officer we'd love to hear that too maybe this is a one-off maybe um it's just you know i don't i'm not out head hunting i don't want him to de destroy his family or or anything like that like he could be a decent guy that just made a bad decision well it sounds like he's made at least two bad decisions okay maybe a couple Austin says, unfortunately for the town, people will look at less fortunate people like that and assume it's a drug-related issue or due to the amount of addicts that roam around our town. Yeah, that's a everywhere thing, right? And and even if even if it is a drug-related thing, that, that shouldn't matter. It doesn't mean that he doesn't deserve to, to be found, to be looked for. Like, what, what are the, the resources that we put into protecting our communities if not to try to help them? Like, especially in a situation like this. And there's a family that's devastated because of it. Linda says, that's the stance of a lot of cops here. Not going to hold your hand and not going to babysit you. And there's a, there's a giant difference. That's the other thing I meant to mention this. Like there's a difference between babysitting someone and then taking care of someone who is in like desperate need of help. Like that's not babysitting. Fuck that guy. I was just going to say that, Donna. Sounds like Eric could have become hypothermic. That in itself can cause odd behavior. Throwing off his clothes, shirt, etc. as part of being hypothermic. You start to feel very hot very quickly. Yes, absolutely. So that's a good point. Thank you so much for sharing that, Donna. And hello, Donna. I haven't seen you for a little while. <laughs> yeah, hello, Donna. Like this. Let's see. Christy says, Officer Channel walked out upon learning of the investigation. Did he plead the fifth, which implies he committed a crime that he won't be witness against himself? Or did he lawyer up? Those details should be known. That is a great question. I should know that answer, but I do not. Maybe we should give the uh, police department a call. His poor mom, so heartbreaking, couldn't imagine. I pray for answers and closure for his family. Oops. Oh, he lawyered up, huh? I mean, and that's not indicative of him committing a crime, but it doesn't look good either. Connie says to call him. <laughs> if we if we did these live streams a bit earlier in the day, we could call during normal work hours when someone's actually around. Oh, well, now's a good time to share a Patreon page so we don't have to go to work. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Linda says, agreed, mental health is not always taken seriously. Both cases essentially involve mental health issues. Yeah, I mean, it it, it, it all is. Addiction is is a mental illness. Oops, did you just share something? I didn't. Nope. Okay. Um, if you really thought he hadn't done anything wrong, he wouldn't have dipped out as soon as people start asking questions exactly. Uh, Stace says, I would like to know who told the police that Eric had a blue jacket on. That was on a flyer, I believe, made by the sheriff's office. I know if you talk about the right and uh, the red and white one, we made that. And initially, the information I had was that he did have a jacket on. Um, so if you talk about that one, that was my mistake. I think I read it like Heather a comment. Here. Uh, our first encounter with Cole uh, was he was when he and another officer came up to our house uh, to tell me he just saw me let a fugitive with a gun through my house. I told him no, and because I have a toddler in my house, and asked him if he was fucking crazy, and slammed the door in his face. <laughs> what? Wow! <laughs> saw you let a fugitive with a gun through your house. Uh, Luke says, Cole was a shitty cop to me, got in my face in my yard and tried to give me tickets over dog got out and said he would crush my kids' bikes because they were too close to the road and we lived at the end of a dead-end road. I called Ashland police and they had tickets dropped. 
I've had multiple what run-ins the? over stupid things. He was always ignorant ass, honestly. Uh, ignorant ass. Honestly, he was never just nice, always trying to be some big guy. He was like, I'm from a way bigger place, always throwing out that they're very ignorant person, in my opinion. Thanks for including what? that, in my opinion. Yes, yes. We we like the in my opinion, I think, or assume, because we don't want to get in trouble for slander or libel. So. Right. Chris says, one question the police ask citizens is, if you didn't do anything wrong, why did you need an attorney? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I don't know if she's saying cop told everyone Eric had a jacket on. Oh, there's Joe Charpentier. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Uh, I said, I tuned in late. Apologies if this has been answered. Our complaints against the Washburn Police Department a common thing. There was some comments in there uh, earlier about um, they've had some like excessive force charges and stuff against them. Yeah, uh, there's but, and from these comments, there there definitely seems like there should have been complaints against Cole. Like, there's a lot of people that have some some strong words for him. Ah, I don't want to bring this up because someone else mentioned it, but screw it. Uh, Luke says, I don't exactly know how true this is, but I heard he allowed some favors from females in town, was hoping someone was going to bring that up. And there were comments about that earlier. That's actually like the sixth time I've seen something along those lines, and we don't know the validity of any of that. Um, it is just sort of hearsay. Hopefully that's all it is. Maybe Joe could do an article about this missing person case. What do you think, Joe? <laughs> I mean, he's a little ways away down in Lewiston, but <laughs> yeah, it's happening not, in our not great exactly. state. Right, right. But we need to get we need to we need to hire journalists and have a newsletter about this stuff. By hire, I mean we will thank them. We'll pay them with compliments. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, unless somebody has anything else they want to talk about um we kind of run out of material here but yeah and we, we do want to say in. yeah i want to personally say thank you to everyone tuning in for this and and trying to and sharing this out if you've shared it if you haven't please do you know uh, that helps get this story out there because you can look this up and there's not a lot out there the articles that you see is like one paragraph and that's about it um you know i wonder if this is true what Alicia is saying uh ever since this incident watchman has not had a police department with no explanation to the citizens is that true if you live up in Washburn, please let us know i'm from Washburn, lived there since i was 12 into my 30s there's only been three good cops in my lifetime there that's sad joe says uh yeah out of my coverage area but bug the papers by all means <laughs> and in case anyone doesn't normally follow us joe charpentier is a reporter uh that was uh an investigative reporter that was on a couple weeks ago uh, covering celeste dougie Cel case dog me very I, i'm always mispronouncing it virginia says i have not seen police in washburn in a while and that is aside from the one or two sheriffs i have seen like for a month so that's interesting Trisha said, yes, true. Sanders said, this one officer now. Heather says, it's true. So, wow. This could be like a huge scandal for them. Stacey says, thank you so much. You have no idea how much this was needed. It's true. We don't have a police department. Oh, yeah, yeah right there. Oh, I yeah. think we just clicked on the same thing. There are no active officers in Washburn at this time. Yes. Unreal. Did, like, did the finances just come through and they had to, like, they couldn't afford it? Like, that's such a weird time. Like, because there is probably least preparing for a lawsuit. Maybe. Not, nope. Am I clicking things on you? Uh, my oh, husband spoke with the sheriff's uh, downtown two days ago, and he says that the sheriff's department is covering us. When asked why, he said he didn't know. Okay, wow. And main troopers are covering our, uh, now cover our area. Okay, so it's probably troopers and the, the sheriff's department. I Yeah, that's weird. 
I wonder if there is something about ready to to come down about Washburn's police department. So they still have a chief. Oh, some. Um, this case really needs to be solved because it's very sickening. There's a lot of little little towns without cops, so the state cops and sheriffs have to take care of these little towns. So therefore, things like this get left behind and things don't get solved. Where's the chief? Remember that? Where's the beef? Oh, and Stacy says, I want to share something else. If you go yeah, into they... Maine State Police and type Eric's name in there, it's nowhere, no results we found yet. They're horrible about updating that list. Trisha says but, uh, corruption in a small town. So and we've said it a couple of times already, but yeah, if you guys can share this on, on any of the platforms you're, you're watching or listening on, whether it be YouTube or Facebook, or I mean, we're even on Twitch right now, but I don't think we have any viewers on Twitch. That's fine. But you know, uh, share I had this to ask out. Jeff what Twitch was. I didn't even know what it was. Yeah. It's just, just another platform for us to try and get these, these stories out on. So um, yeah, if you can share them out, you know, the likes help, subscriptions, which is greatly appreciated. Um, but, you know, we can't, the, these stories don't get heard unless people see them, right? And if we put any sort of pressure on the police departments to try to, to get their asses in gear. Remember, Eric was a veteran, like he deserved better. Yeah. Yeah, I take that personally because I'm a, I'm a veteran as well. We were sharing a chief of police with Ashland Police Department. I do not know if that chief is still active duty with Washburn or not. Again, a citizen have been kept completely in the dark. Have you please reach out to, I don't know what you guys have up there. Do you have a mayor? Do you have a mayor or, or whoever? Selectman or whatever. Selectman. Yeah, reach out to your selectman and find out what they're doing about this. They all got the hell out of here. Uh, out of there because they are being questioned and they know he was in the wrong so they don't have to answer because there's nobody there to answer town manager sandra sandra miller says this is a town manager oh yeah let's look up her phone number Uh, state police seem slow. I don't think there's ever been any updates since they searched the house in the Teen Shaw case. Uh, you are correct. There's not been anything. It is it is crazy to have two stories, you know, because he went missing January 30th, then a teen's case finally got coverage soon after that, right? And to have these two cases going on at the same time definitely puts a spotlight on that area. So I do have some contact information for the town of Washburn. I don't see the actual. There is a, a th name that comes up on LinkedIn, but I don't know if that's a current town manager. Um, Billy Joe says a teen Shaw case was handled carelessly. Same cop on both cases. So a teen Shaw disappeared. And uh, Officer Cole is the one that took the initial report, believed the husband, and did nothing with it. And now Officer Cole is the one that was last seen with Eric Foote. There's also another missing person from the same town. Yeah, but he comes from a, a big city, so he knows how to handle things, right? Right. Big city that he got suspended from. Or biting his friend and attacking his wife <laughs> biting his friend or a friend i don't know if it was his friend probably not friends anymore but um so i think that yeah we're probably just about at the end of this uh, unless ha anyone has any more any more to to talk about here but we, we greatly appreciate everyone tuning in yes we had a great turnout we appreciate everyone uh the comments uh the few phone calls nice that was good love to hear some more uh, if you guys have a case that you want us to cover please reach out to us because we are looking for more cases to cover currently we have nothing scheduled for next week jeff which is not good yeah sure, but we, we've been yeah, three you, weeks to go ahead 
Yeah, yeah, it has been pretty good. We uh, we usually try to do every every Wednesday, uh, starting at seven p.m. Eastern time, uh, is when we have the podcast, and we'll we'll be on next Wednesday nonetheless. Um, or you know, we'll but we'll just try to try to dig some stuff up, maybe some old stuff, maybe some updates if there's anything that we've covered in the past. Maybe we have some updates. Um, but I uh, just want to thank you, everyone, for for tuning in and, and sharing this out there. Yeah, thank you guys. Everyone have a good night. Uh, please yes. pray for Eric and let's see what we can do to help bring him home. Uh, if you're available this spring, uh, I think Brenda wants to try to do a search. But if you live up in the area, please on your own. If you have property, please search your property. Uh, yeah, if you have absolutely. a drone or if you have a boat and willing to go up the river, please do that. Uh, we just need to find Eric and bring him home for his family. Oops. Oh, honestly, that's what we're saying. Like, I don't think he's that bad of a cop that he could screw up two cases like that. Uh, Megan, the Dennis DeShane case keeps coming back. And Megan's also saying new court stuff happening next month. Um, no, I saw that. On, on Dennis DeShane case. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. He was convicted of murdering Sarah Cherry. Um, oh, and let me share this out here one more time before we go. This will be the last thing we do. Um, this is the Facebook page uh, for help bring uh, Eric Foot home. So if you guys all want to go like that, follow that page. Uh, if there's any updates, then it will definitely come through that. But if we get anything, we will obviously will share that out as well. So, um, And Stacy, yeah. Yeah. Uh... Her cousin Austin is in this group chat, and I did talk to Francis, who's her brother, um, about covering the case a couple different times, but we just haven't made it work. So that's a good one. I'll, I'll try to reach back out to him. Thank you, Stacy. All right, guys. All right, guys. Uh, well, thank you again. You all have a, a great rest of your night, and uh, and we'll see you next time. Right, have a good night.